Today I will talk not about a novel, but, but about my new book here in, in Holland, uh, uh, In the Beginning, uh, Reshit in Hebrew. Reshit is the first word of the Hebrew Bible. It means, Bereshit means in the beginning, but it has a special uh, kind. You don't use the word Reshit in, in colloquial Hebrew. You don't use it when you talk to people. Uh, but it's it's as the first word of the Bible. It has some some I would say a, a classical uh, uh, status, and when you say Rashid, everybody knows what, what what you mean. So I started to write this book because about uh, five years ago I gave a lecture in Israel about the love story of Jacob and Rachel in the book of Genesis. I may talk about it a little later. And, uh, and I said that Jacob is not only one of our fathers, our patriarchs, uh, but also is the first dreamer of the Bible. And I was tell talking about the dream of the ladder and the angels going up and down. And I said, this is the first dream of the Bible. What a beautiful dream it was. And then after the, the lecture, somebody approached me and said, uh, Mr. Shalev, I think I'm a little embarrassed, but I think you made a mistake um, in your lecture because this dream is really very important, but it is not the first dream of the Bible. It's the second dream of the Bible. And the first dream is the dream that a certain Philistine king called Abimelech dreamt about Sarah, the wife of Abraham. Uh, I don't know if you all know that, but uh, our father Abraham had a strange habit of giving his wife to other men. Uh, he did it twice. He did it with Pharaoh in Egypt, and he did it with this Philistine king, because Sarah was a very beautiful woman, and Abraham was afraid that if he comes to these lands, the king will want uh, his woman, and since she's married to him, they will kill him and take his wife. So he used to say, she is his sister, and give her to, to the king, you know. Uh, for me, it's a little strange. Uh, uh, I would say, then, why go there in the first place? Go to other places. Uh, but, but this is what happened, and then God appeared in Abimelech's dream and told him, you are going to die because uh, of what you did, of taking a married woman to your uh, bedroom. Uh, uh, but the Bible mentions uh, very specifically that there was no um, physical connection between the king and, and Sarah. And uh, I mean, God came on time, you know, and, and, and uh, and he and uh, he said, but but her husband said she's his sister. So God said, it's okay. I will not hurt you because uh, you did not touch this woman. But you have to return her to to her husband. And this is what uh, he did. And then after this man corrected me, and I was uh, grateful for his correction, I decided to look for some other uh, first times in the Bible. First, just by reading. Uh, and I was a little surprised here and there. Uh, the first love of the Bible, for example, is not a love of, of a couple, of a man and a woman. Uh, um, the first kiss of the Bible is not a kiss of love or of, of passion. It's a kiss of suspicion and checking. This is the kiss that uh, Isaac and his son Jacob kissed when Jacob cheated his father and impersonated as Esau to get the better blessing that the older uh, son is, is entitled to. Uh, and I, I saw that there are some surprises in, 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 in these first times. And eventually, after reading more and more, I decided to write this book. It's not the first time I, I deal with the Bible. I, I published many years ago uh, my first book about the Bible, which, which is, was more political than this one, called The uh, Bible New, uh, The Bible Now, The Bible for Now. 
and this is the this is uh, the second the second one. When I did that, I decided um, uh, to to uh, the, the the first time must be uh, uh, very specific. I mean, if I'm dealing with the first love, then this is the first time the word love or the verb to love appear in the text. Otherwise, uh, I will have to interpret the text and then people may argue with me that how do you know there was love in this case or if there wasn't. For example, if we take the case of Adam and Eve, the first couple in the Bible, the word love do not appear in, the, in, in their relationships. The word passion or desire does appear in the text about their relationships and one can say but there must be love between Adam and Eve. You know, every loving couple wishes to be like Adam and Eve, the only couple in the world. This is what we, we feel when we are really in love. We feel as if there is no other man and no other women uh, uh, in the world. Uh, it's only us, like Adam and Eve were in, in, in their time. So, and, and yet the word love do not appear there. And the word love do not appear in the relationships of Noah and his wife, even though you can understand that she was really very patient, caring wife because she let Noah quit his job and start building the ark and then take her to this journey of a year in the flood with all the animals in the boat. She must be a loving woman. <laughs> but but the, word love, the word love do, do not appear in the text. Um, and the first time, and you don't find love between Abraham and Sarah, the first time the word love appears in the biblical text is when God commands Abraham, take your son, your only son, the one you love, here this love is the first one in the Bible, Isaac, and sacrifice him to me in the place I, I will show you. So this command is so shocking, is so horrible, that we don't notice that it's the first time we meet love in the Bible. But uh, uh, on the other hand, it is interesting to see that the first love is not between the parents, but between the father and the son. And indeed, it correlates with the basic conception of the Bible, that love between a husband and a wife <coughs> is not that important. Uh, today, we are a little spoiled romantically and emotionally, and we think that there must be love, and then if there will be, then there is marriage. First love, and then uh, uh, marriage. Not in the Bible. In the Bible, first you get married, and you have to make children. This is the idea of marriage <coughs> and of the family. And if, if there is love between the, the husband and his wife, this is, of course, very nice and everybody is very happy, but it is not a condition that must be fulfilled in the Bible. And there are very few loving couples uh, um, in the Bible. And the way the Bible looks at it is manifested in the next couple, the son of Abraham and Sarah and his wife, Rebecca, this is the first couple in which we find the word love. When uh, Isaac, who was 40 years old and still a bachelor, which is unheard of in the Jewish community, you know, you cannot be 40 years old and bachelor in biblical times. It's, it's, a, it's a unique phenomena. And, and, and Rashi, our great interpreter, uh, said something very interesting. 1,000 years before Freud, Rashi said, Yitzhak could not marry a wife before his, his mother died. It is only after the death of his mother that he was able to get married to, to, to another woman. And this indeed what, uh, was what, uh, what happened when the slave of Abraham was sent to Haran, which is the northeast of, uh, 
uh, the northwest of Iraq or maybe the southeast of Turkey to bring a wife uh, for Yitzhak. And he, he brought Rebecca, a, a relative from there. And the Bible says that the order of things that occurred when Yitzhak saw Rebecca coming to him with the, this slave was that he took her to the tent of his mother, which was dead already, but he kept, kept her tent. It's another way of telling how close he was to her. Then he married her, and then he loved her. So this is the right order of things. First, you introduce your bride to your parents. Here it's a symbolic introduction because the mother is not there and the father is far away. I don't know if you noticed it, but since the Akedah, the sacrifice, Yitzhak and Abraham do not have any contact with each other, something that, uh, of course, we can understand. And, and, uh, uh, and then he marries, Re married Rebecca, and then he loved her. If we go one generation forward to the generation of Jacob and Esau, uh, the, the, the twin brothers of, of Rebecca and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Yitzhak, here love appears again for the third time when the Bible says that Yitzhak loved Esau because he brought him meat, game, hunting uh, uh, game to eat. Because he brought him the meat he hunted. And Rebecca loved Jacob, period. So the love of Yitzhak to Esau is conditional. It's because his son brings him meat to eat. Maybe if Esau will say, will tell his father one day, I'm fed up with hunting, I'm going to find a different career, uh, uh, Yitzhak will stop loving him. But the love of Rebecca to her son Jacob is unconditional. She loves him and that's that. And indeed she prefers uh, uh, Jacob and she helps him to she not only help but initiates this trick when they both cheat Yitzhak, who is old and blind, and Jacob impersonated as Esau and got the better blessing from his, from his father. And then Jacob went from their house in, in Canaan to Haran, to the house of the family uh, where Rebecca came from, to run away from Esau. And this is where he, he, he meets Rachel, Rachel, and this is where the nicest, most beautiful love story of the Bible starts. And this is what I want to, to talk a little now because this will give you an idea of, of how I wrote uh, 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 this book in the beginning, which means it is a secular reading of the Bible. I'm not a religious person. It is uh, a literary uh, uh, reading of, of, of this text because I'm reading it as a person who is writing himself and I learn a lot from, from, from the way the, the genius author of this uh, writer wrote. And there is something very moving for me personally or for every Hebrew writer today is the knowledge that maybe we are the only language in the world today in which you can read a text that was written 3,000 years ago and understand it. Um, a Greek man in Athens cannot read Homerus, the original Homerus. Uh, a Roman uh, lady cannot read Virgil or Ovidius in Old Latin and understand it. Um, but we can still read biblical texts that were written thousands of years ago and understand it and the feeling that him and me are writing the same language and almost the same. And if King David will come now through this door into this hall, I could tell him in Hebrew, I read your poetry, I really appreciate it. <laughs> 
what do you think about my book? Here, take this one. Uh, I will sign it for you. Uh, uh, this is very exciting. This is very moving for me because this language is, a, I think it's a privilege to, to write in this language, which is in use of writers for, for so many years. It's a very old uh, tradition. Um, so if I come now to the story of the first meeting of Jacob and Rachel near the well in the land of Kedem in, in, in Haran, he came all the way through the desert from the land of Canaan to, to this area. It's more than 1,000 kilometers. Uh, the Bible does not describe this uh, huge trek, but, but you can understand it was not easy. If you want to get better description of, of this uh, hiking, you can read uh, Thomas Mann's uh, Joseph and his brothers. He described the, the trip there. Uh, and he meets some shepherds near the well, and there is a big stone on the mouth of the well, and the big heavy stone is there to prevent one shepherd to roll the stone away and take water as much as you want. It is only a group of shepherds that can push the stone away, and then everybody is there so they can check the amount of water which is given to each, to each flock. So Jacob is there, and he talks to the shepherds. And then he's asking about the fa his family, but without saying this is his family. He's suspicious, he's very careful. He asks the shepherds, do you know Lavan, which is his uncle? They said, yes. He said, is he okay? They say, yes, but he doesn't say it's his uncle. And then they say, and here is Rachel, his daughter, who is coming with her flock. When Jacob saw the daughter of Lavan, the brother of his mother, and the sheep of Lavan, the brother of his mother, because Jacob was both romantic and practical. <laughs> he was impressed by the beauty of the shepherdess and by the, the nice looking of the sheep. He checked this as well. He wanted to know whether the family he came to visit is a family that will support him or a family he will have to support. But he was impressed by both. And then, if you remember the order of actions of his father, who saw his future love, took her to the tent of his mother, married her and loved her. With Jacob, everything is going completely different. First, he pushed the stone away by himself from the wall, from the well. Then he gave water to the sheep of Rachel. Then he kissed her. Then he cried. And then he introduced himself. This is unbelievable. This is real, it's a wild behavior. A, a nice Jewish boy should introduce himself first. Said, Hello, Rachel, I'm Jacob. I'm the son of Rivka, uh, the, the, the sister of your father. Kiss her like cousins do. May I help you with your sheep? Give water to the sheep. He may cry too, of course. It's a very moving moment. <laughs> And let's go home to my uncle. I'm really hungry. This should be the, the, the right order of things. But Jacob is behaving according to no rule. And I think since we know Jacob is a very orderly person and a man who plans his moves, there must be some thinking be, behind such, such a, an order of, 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 of behavior. I think that Jacob understood that if he will introduce himself first as a cousin, that then everything else will not be as impressive as he wanted it to be. 